Hello, welcome back to another episode of WNN. Today we'll be talking about Cubase 14, what looks to be an actually pretty good update for Cubase. It seems like they're trying to be Bitwig, and honestly, that seems like a pretty good thing to try to be. So the coolest thing they've added by far are these different types of modulators. These include an envelope follower, a step modulator, LFO, macro knob, mod scripter, and shaper. And I'm not gonna lie, in comparison, this is nearly copyright infringement to Bitwig. Maybe it's just the, the theme they're using here. I mean, I guess if anything, the way Bitwig does it is a lot better looking. It's like colorful too. As it seems for a dark UI, not really a criticism, uh, more so just an observation. So I know what some of you guys will say, wow, Wow, you, you have modulation now in your DAW. That's amazing. I could already do that in my third-party plugin. It opens up a lot of possibilities for using more modulation than what your plugin would allow. It also adds in the possibility of working modulation with the stock devices, or maybe with plugins that don't have any modulation features. I can't imagine one that doesn't have any at this point though. They've also added a pattern sequencer allowing you to sequence rhythms, beats, etc. And it looks strangely like an APC to me, you know, the APC 40. I mean, let's do, let's do a little comparison there. Like let's throw them back to back. It, it, what, does that look like that? It definitely looks like an Excel spreadsheet when you throw it on dark mode. This might look even more like an Excel spreadsheet than what they say Ableton looks like. They've also added a drum track. I know there's only so many different ways to do the same thing, but it's just really funny that in Ableton it's called drum rack and then in cubase it's called drum track they've added some new plugins as well such as shimmer and studio delay shimmer obviously being a shimmer reverb interstellar soundscape this is a crazy way to refer to uh shimmer reverb because like don't get me wrong shimmer sounds okay but interstellar soundscapes it's a little grandiose right then they've also added the studio delay which they claim is super creative incredibly easy to use one thing i'm noticing with the way they describe things is is everything has to be extreme it's got to be visceral it's got to have extreme adjectives interstellar soundscapes ethereal ambiences dreamlike reverberant spaces super creative incredibly easy to use okay whoever's writing this like just just tone it down a little bit like i'm not saying you can't throw in some of that language but you can't have it in like every phrase several times in a single sentence it's just insane I, I feel like i'm losing my fucking mind dude yeah you're doing too much is what i'm trying to say you're doing too much like i think what you have here is pretty good i haven't looked at the price yet i think the price couldn't could you sway it either way but one thing i will say i think it's only been it's been about a year exactly since uh steinberg released cubase 13. is that too often guys is that too i don't really know i don't know what's the DAW etiquette these days or plugin etiquette i mean i guess if you're adding a lot that's pretty good so they've revamped the score editor it appears to be using a new algorithm from uh, dorico technology you can quickly and easily examine and edit your music displayed as notation and produce great looking legible parts for your Bro, wait, hold on a second. This person's cooking. I don't know what the fuck they're cooking. They might be cooking meth, though. 5 8, 4 8, 3 8, 4 8, 5 8. Like, bro, pick a time signature and stick with it. Or even just pick two. What the fuck, dude? We're just cycling. This is insane. Kind of respect it. The first thing that you will notice with the new score editor in Cubase 14 is that now, when you play a real time MIDI part, you will be able to have a very clean looking score straight away. So, as the first thing on this video, I want to play something live on the keyboard and then I want to show you how it looks in notation. That face low. As you can see, I played a simple piano part. I didn't quantize, I didn't touch it. Let's see how it looks with the new score editor. I'm going to go. Okay, if I had to guess what's going to happen here, it's going to kind of analyze it. And if I had to guess what's going to happen here, it's going to analyze it. It's not going to like fuck it up completely. It's not going to think you're doing like 15 different time signatures. I will say this is one nice thing about Cubase. The ability to transition between the, the score and the DAW. That seems pretty powerful and I'll say a bit unique. Core that this core editor produced. As you can see, it's very clean. It detected that I played a piano. So depending on the range that you use, it's going to give you a different look. But the most important thing is how clean it looks. Check it out. We have slurs. We have slurs. What kind of slurs we got, man? You're saying f Are you saying Cato notes right here, the accidentals look clean, and if I played back... Yeah, 
this seems pretty epic. Like, I'm just curious how accurate it has to be. You know, I want to see him play that much worse, and I want to see what happens. Because he did play it pretty on beat. That's pretty insane that's able to analyze the key, too. Okay, this looks pretty interesting. One thing that looks interesting about this is the way you can drag it down from the top. It seems like it makes it a bit easier to control the volume for a specific thing without having to chop it. They've also added some workflow improvements as well, one of which being there is a full mix console in the lower zone, aka the bottom of the screen. Never heard anybody call it the lower zone before, but you know, hey, maybe that's what they do over in Cubase land. They've also added an auto filter. Kind of surprised they didn't have that before. And then we have the underwater effect. Hey, you know what? Maybe it's been so long that that might become cool again. AKA the Drake effect. I think I think that's at least what they're going for here. Oh God, dude. Bro, okay. Steinberg, you can hire me and I will I will cringe proof your website, okay? You can send it to me and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what's cringe and what you should get rid of. All right, which boomer came up with this? Preview like a boss, like a boss. So from what it seems like here, um, you can now preview your samples at the correct pitch and speed directly in the media bay, as well as transpose or warp the preview however you like. So obviously they have a free trial and they also have three different versions. Let's take a look at the pricing here. Yep, so it's a lot of money, but so are a lot of DAWs other than uh, FL Studio or uh, Reaper. So $5.79 for the full version. And they have this weird competitive cross grade thing, which is $3.59. They're basically like giving you a discount if you use other DAWs and you want to buy Cubase. I guess like they're they're thinking like, oh, you're going to buy this and you're not going to go back. Which, I mean, that might be the, the case. I mean, there's probably several people that just use them either way. So you're just giving them a discount. It seems like basically every DAW though, <laughs> right? Am I wrong? That seems like most of them. What the hell's Ability Pro? Have you guys heard of Ability Pro? Then they have the update for existing customers at 100, which I think is pretty reasonable, at least for the things you're getting. It's $200 from 12 though, kind of losing it there. And then 250 from these lower price, like that's kind of crazy. So you could have just, who the fuck has Cubase 4 at this point? That's insane. And then they have a bunch of, uh, I don't know, you could look through all of these here if you want. But they have three different versions though. That's for the pro version. They have the artist version, you know, it scales essentially. Uh, you're getting less things with each one. I'm not going to go through and tell you what you get in each one, honestly. Like, just go look on the website. I'm going to try to not fill up this video completely with boring information. I mean, I could spend the next 10 minutes reading to you each price for each thing and how much it costs to cross grade, upgrade, all that shit. But yeah, let's not do that. Okay, guys, that is it for this episode of WNN. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here for more music production updates and as well as music news. Check out my second channel if you haven't. It'll be linked down in the description. If you want to support the channel and you like what I do here, consider joining my Patreon or becoming a channel member. For as low as $5 a month, you get access to exclusive content, outtakes, and other goodies. I'll see you guys next time.